It's Monday, it's raining, but we're moving. This is Every Train, Behind the Build, episode five. five. Episode five already. I can't believe uh, how fast this channel is growing. Five episodes, but we've got over 2,000 subscribers. It's amazing, and the comments coming in from other YouTubers, from other business owners, from property developers, from just general people that are enjoying it. We're learning, we're making mistakes, but we're applying what we're learning, trying to improve the content all the time. And uh, honestly, it's given me a new lease of life for our businesses. It's the same for Alex. And uh, I can't wait for you to see more of that side of our business as well. I hope you're liking it, guys. If you do like it, please like and subscribe and drop a comment because apparently that really helps the channel. And uh, it's just going to inspire me to bring even more content. And with each week, I'm growing more open and, and I want to be more honest about the stuff we're putting out there. But um, yeah, this week's another very typical week in the life of every trade. All sorts going on. Let's have it. So, Monday morning, and I brought KTM down to our hidden storage facility. Not really, it's a lockup in Stockport. You'll remember in one of the previous episodes, this is where Dale was based, and then Dale outgrew that space really quickly. So we've shifted Dale over to our main HQ, and everything that was in our main HQ was brought over here and mixed in Chaos. with everything else we've got. And I brought KTM down because I want to make a plan to get this into some kind of order. Now, probably a lot of you guys have got a lockup or somewhere where you just pile your stuff and store your bits and pieces, think I'll use that one day, I'll use that on the next job. But this is like on steroids, it's ridiculous, you next level. You want me level. to organize this? Well, not you personally. Good. Yeah, actually, yeah, you. So, start now. now. And I'll see you on Friday. Right, see you in a bit. But no, honestly, what we need to do is get a group of the lads here, get everything into order. What I want is things like plumbing sections. Mm. Like, for example, we've got a million bits of trims and so much beading shit. and little bits of timber. We might actually be brutal and actually throw some of this away because there's literally no point in keeping it if we're never going to know it's here, never going to use it. We've got shower trays. There's literally four of them there, brand new. I actually reckon we could build a full house. That isn't tanking, is it? No. Forward. No, no, that's ditch for Matty. There is some tanking somewhere in here, yeah. isn't there? Definitely. Underlay. It's like Del Boy's garage, but 50 times bigger. So, yeah, we've got some. We've probably, we've probably got thousands of pounds worth of stuff in here, but it's mm. worth nothing to nobody if we don't know it's here mm. and we don't use it. So, what I want to happen next week is a group of lads here, someone in charge, logging it, putting it into a, a decent order that we mm. can then have a full itinerary and then, or is it an inventory? Inventory. Inventory. Same. Yeah. Um, we'll one it. of them, and then we literally know what we've got. So we've got like l this pipe rack here with all different random diameter bits and pieces of pipe. Some of it, honestly, is so small, there's no point in keeping it. But like, for example, there, that's a good length, isn't it, Kieran? Not bad. Oh, you mean the pipe? Yeah, I meant the pipe. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah. Good length. Anyway, but it's worth keeping things like that, but it's not worth keeping small. Mm. Smaller lens cabin. Right, but yeah, okay. oh, that's all nice. this needs separating into bits and pieces, different lengths and right. diameters. Different lengths for different needs. So they say. Yeah. Do you reckon you could find some manpower next week yeah. to sort this? Easily. Just literally, I reckon get someone down here that can lead the way and then get to some other bodies. I think we get Danny to oversee it, don't we? Oh, I think that's a good idea. Getting down on his laptop is create a full yeah, yeah, like, database we'll, of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but, then we'll get. I've got three, uh, two or three lads can come and focus on this, can't they? Yeah, that's Starting what we need. Starting next Monday. Yeah, and literally right. we'll start at that end. But like, yeah, we've yeah. got all this shelf space here. What's the point of having all this if we haven't got bits on it? True. All this racking we can be utilised. You could really like organise this quite well. Do you not need any of that over at the other yard then? No, no, no. it's all there for a reason. Yeah. yeah. Um, these have gone down well. <laughs> so I bought a load of these things here at auction. The idea is, I've actually done one somewhere, but I don't know where it is, but we're going to make them into the health and safety stations on each job. Um, and I it's also got a bit where you can keep the plans in. I'm going to find the one that I did make, which is there. It's on here, it's got everything on it. I think it's the class bit of kit on each job. So all the health and safety on, you've got a place where you can put the plans and everything. But Again, I've bought it and it's just piled up here. But you could actually, what is the coring set? Or it's at least it's the box for the coring set.
Del Boy. <laughs> it's my idol. Absolutely my idol. Get your laptop in. No, it's still in there. Um, so yeah, next week we're going to get in here and this, and I'm, I'm glad because YouTube's going to hold us accountable, this is going to look like a prime storage facility. Everything's going to be itemised. We're going to have a full inventory inventory yeah. of everything yeah. and um and it's going to be a really useful tool for us to have because literally we've probably got thousands of pounds worth of bits and pieces in here mm. that we could put into the next job and the next job and turn that into profit because it's all paid for but at the moment it's just like someone's loft so yeah, it's just chaos. yeah it is and it's no it's not as bad as i thought it was going to be i'm not going to lie yeah so your job it's all right, yeah. get me a team together yeah. to make this happen uh over uh, what, next week bathrooms anyway, yeah we could we've got literally got everything yeah Toilets. Yeah, so if you ever need any random bits of building materials, you know where to let me know. I won't know where to find it, but we will be able to check our inventory to find it. So yeah, yeah. let's get it sorted. So yeah, a bit to do there. It's a bit of a mess. We're going to need to get on that because what's the point? We're just going to be hoarding stuff that we'll never make any money off. I'm just paying rent on a unit that we don't need. So we'll get on that. I can honestly say I'm loving this YouTube thing. And I think now I've finally worked out why I love it and it's honestly because I'm in a position where I'm speaking to like-minded people all the time people that love business like I love my business like Dave from D&J Projects when he came to see me last week like his enthusiasm for what he does it's so infectious it's just like how I am and me and him have spoke to each other a few times since then talking about how we could work together how we could make money for each other how we could support each other and I think he feels the same in that it's good just to get on the phone to someone who, um, who actually is passionate about what they're doing. And then Baz from Welder Faber put a little post on yesterday about our channel being the next big channel and stuff. And like, that's amazing. And who knows, I'm going to try my hardest to put the best content out that I can make. But that, there are people there that are like at the top of their game, smashing it, not just on YouTube, but in real life, like what Baz and his team do blow my mind like they can fix pretty much anything and they'll make stuff from nothing and I, I, I've, I've consumed their content for so long because I, I'm in awe of people like that and to get recognition from them and to be able to converse with people like that is amazing but not just that, it's the comments it's the people in the comments, other business owners like me that are watching my content because they want to learn from stuff that I'm doing or see how I'm doing a certain thing or even learn how not to do something because the mistakes that I'll be open and honest about and I'm really, really enjoying that. And I'm trying my hardest to go back to every single comment quickly and be relevant. And if I don't, let me know because I want to. If you, What I would recommend is following us on our Instagram page, which is at every underscore trade, because I'm going to put a lot more on there, a bit more day-to-day -day stuff. And I try and be quite responsive to the comments there but um, I'm loving it. I'm just loving speaking to other enthusiastic business owners and YouTube is so powerful for that. And uh, I feel a bit late to the party, but honestly, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give it my everything and I wanna meet as many people in similar businesses. I've still not heard back from uh, my other mate, the big YouTuber. To be fair, he's probably very busy. But it would be nice to hear from him, you know, because I look up to him, he's smashed it. And uh, I'm not going to mention it. Dan! 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 But a few people have worked it out, but God loves a tryer, and you never know. Anyway, back at HQ now, a few bits to do. And guess what? It's still raining. So it's Monday morning still, and I'm uh, doing what I do every Monday and seeing who's subscribed to the Monday Club. We've got four four people in the Monday Club this week, which is not bad. What we do is, though, and in all seriousness, we joke about it, but we take it really seriously. I'm not a big fan of it. If you're, if you're not going to come in and bother to come in on a Monday, why bother coming in at all? Um, we've got um, four, which is about, it's probably high, it's about average, but we keep a log of everything. So when anyone has a day off, be it legitimate or not, we keep a log of everything. And then we try and produce um, like a report at the end of each month so we know who the main absentees are. And to be honest, we've got a great set of lads that, that, that don't take the mick. But we used to be, when we had even bigger team than we got now, 
we'd produce graphs as a bit of a nerd and we could see and it was always the same offenders and literally you get them in and it was black and white you just can't keep those people because they affect your mental health because you're like I can be bothered coming in Kieran can be bothered coming in everyone else can be bothered coming in why can't you be bothered to turn up on time and it uh, gets me down but on our software I can see who's clocked in who's clocked out what time they clocked in then I can always correlate that against the tracker as well so it's not necessarily great but I do spend a lot of my time seeing who's clocked in and when they clocked in. Um, but again, it's just great having these metrics right to my phone so I can stay right on top of the business. But um, to be honest, the guys are already on it. Uh, KTM will be already speaking to people, asking why they're not in. Uh, and sometimes people have got genuine reasons for not being in, but it is a bit of a bit of a problem in this industry, particularly with certain trades. Let me know which if you know what trades I'm talking about. So I'm in the office with the boys, having a little catch up. And actually this weekend, we went out. Danny was out, but you'll never see him, so it doesn't really matter. And T-Burn West made an appearance. And actually I witnessed him getting in some ears. And I, I can confirm, and I didn't believe, but he's actually a master. So what was that all about? Um, you know, just... Uh, she was nice. Just, you know, see, see, see someone there. You what know, was your she approach? Quite nice. What was your opener? Oh no, we can't say your opener. <laughs> they told me he's open, we can't, we can't say my that. My opener, it was to do with Michael Jackson. Yeah, we can't talk about that. Yeah, because yeah. it was a Michael Jackson song run. Yeah, but it, was but it, to do with, but it worked. To do with him. It worked somehow, don't know how. And then yeah, speaking to her for a bit, mm -hmm. got a number. Yeah, and uh, so have you Te messaged her? Yeah, text her the next day. And? No reply. No <laughs> reply. I think like, the phone must be down. Hello, darkness, my friend. You reckon? There an issue with the actual like, when, yeah. you, when it's got two blue ticks on WhatsApp, no, that means they haven't read it. That's not read it yet. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. She'll yeah. definitely message you at some yeah, point. Yeah. Just keep following up on it. Just yeah, just, go, just, put, just yeah. go, any update. Any update. Yeah, any update. Just put, um, did you, oh no, why don't you do what we used to do? You go, um, TB, text TB. back. But that can mean I can sign it Tom off. Bernie. Yeah, yeah, yeah TB, but, TB. But it actually means text back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Text back ASAP. ASAP. But you know what is good as well, Two though? Kisses. What is good as well on, on, uh, on WhatsApp, you can reply to the message. Just keep replying to the first message. Yeah, yeah. And say, did you get this? I just it was should have replied like, yeah. oh yeah, that sounds meant that. Yeah, just to confirm, did you get this? <laughs> have you followed her across all social media platforms as well? No, no, no. I need Jay's out. You've got to be her. persistent. I didn't get this far without being persistent. <laughs> I'll do my best. How did you get on, James? Did you get on in any in any years this weekend? Uh, unfortunately not, mate, no. What did you do? Did you manage your football team? We did, yeah. Oh, how did you get on? Uh, well, let's not talk about it. No, no, go on, how did you get on? We got beat by a very good team. How did you get on? What was the score? Um ten one. To the other team. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. It's good. Your job's safe here, so don't worry about it. Yeah. KTM in the house. Hey, how are we doing? KTM, yeah. How was your weekend, brother? Very chilled. Mm -hmm. okay, really I, I wanted to come and meet you lot, but I ended up out with my brother. Why didn't you come and meet us? Um, because not, I, not on my level, really, meeting you lot. Above or below? Well, I'm way below it. I felt out of depth, especially if Thomas was going. <laughs> Couldn't handle that. I, I know this, and he's not going to like me bringing it up, but like, serious question. When can we get you to the caterpillar on this? It's called the worm. Sorry. If you were, in the 80s when I was born, it was called the caterpillar. I'll do it at some point, but it'll be in the background. I've got no so many videos. I've got so many videos of him doing the, the worm. Well, maybe you could link one in. Somehow. I do remember one time, and he might make me cut this out, but we were, we were in a hotel and I went in my room and I just, I just heard this bang and opened the door and his, his room was down the, down the corridor and he did the worm all the way to his room. And there's no one around, just did it. And I, I didn't, he didn't know I was watching. So I went out and I went, let's go, what bloody hell's going on here? And he's doing the worm down the hotel corridor. I'll do it though. <laughs> so annoying this. Fuck off. That's me, dog. No, I've been doing, you've got to do it though. Imagine you're being your dog. Good night. It's a special move. Some guy. Just helps me get away from people. No yeah. one expects it. I could, oh, I'd break my neck if I tried to do the worm now. Yeah. I've got a busy week. Very. Very. Very busy. I'm about to go on some surveys now. Yeah. Win us some more jobs, hopefully. So I look at jobs, not that many these days. KTM looks at jobs. T-Burn West looks at jobs. And between us, we pass them all to Danny, who then prices them. Yeah, I, oh, no, you I do price mine. You actually. do price yours, actually. Your conversion yeah, yeah. rate's probably better than Danny's, to be fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. Well, we need to look at In that, Danny. In it, Danny. Danny! Let's go and speak to Danny. Come in. Danny! He's not here. It's still Monday. I'm not in the office. I'm not in the yard. I'm in Harmony's bedroom. 
and the man are getting their skincare routine done. It's very important that you look after your skin, especially after slaving. All day. All day by the keyboard. Okay, now Parker's turn for moisturiser. That's it for Monday. See you tomorrow. It's Tuesday. I'm in the car. I've just left central Manchester. What a place, by the way. Central Manchester's going. It's ridiculous. The crane count's so high. There's so much going on. I love it. But I wasn't there to count the cranes. I was there because once a month I see a therapist. Now, I was debating not talking about this because, you know, it's personal. And, and you know, it's not something that I want to really share but I want to be open and honest about it now about two years ago we were renovating our house spent way too much money just come off the back of covid I'd just done certain deals with people and really stretched myself because that's the thing about me I've got an obsession with pushing for the next opportunity for the next thing to throw my energy in and I, I'm never I'm, I never feel comfortable I'm Oh, I'm always needing to be relentless to keep me alive so it just all got on top of me and I wasn't a nice person to be around for my wife or my kids I wasn't depressed I wasn't particularly anxious I was just mute I didn't have any feelings and it was it was getting on top of me so a friend of mine who I really respect got a really good job um, who I never thought would ever need a therapist suggested and told me that he goes to see a therapist so back and forth ignored it for a while just thought I could deal with it <clears throat> and then it just really did all get on top and I nearly messed everything up nearly really ruined my relationship with my wife wasn't the best dad wasn't enjoying my work was snapping a lot so I just thought enough's enough so I I went for it and honestly it's been amazing and as I say I'm not there to talk about depression or whatever and he does start right at the beginning he's called Dr Gareth Palmer and his business is called Men Should Talk and honestly and I'm not the only person to say this because I know a few other celebrities and stuff that see him but he um, I'd say he's changed my life what he's done he's given me an ability to look at things in my business and other people and their effect on me and have a deeper understanding of how it affects me and how the way people are towards me can send me on a path of not being happy so I've started seeing him I went on like an intense once a week for six weeks and we, we covered a lot of ground but now I just check in once a month and honestly it's like a chat it's like I'm, I'm not there I don't I'm not there getting emotional or anything like that I'm just offloading we're trying to work things out at the moment or just today we've discussed my sleep pattern which is awful which and it, I think this coincides with doing the YouTube thing a little bit in that I'm, I'm so like enthusiastic and engaged with it and I, I feel so like just excited by what we're doing I can't sleep so I'm probably sleep, getting two hours of good sleep a night and it's uh, but weirdly I don't feel tired but what he was saying is that like that's doing damage to your body and you're not you're ignoring it and so he gave me a few techniques on how we're going to sort that out um i need to start putting the devices down at nine o'clock and uh, really sort of getting in the room and you know focusing more on my family and my wife and stuff and just and it's good once a month to check in and just sort of offload and it, it's made me a more effective leader and a more effective businessman it's definitely made me a better husband and parent but I can honestly say that like, in our industry, particularly with certain trades, um, it, 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 mental health is poor. It's a lot of people. And when I do a post or I talk about mental health, so many people speak to me about it. And it's people that you don't expect. I mean, I was speaking to Gareth about it. Statistically, in our industry, suicide rates are so high take at a certain age and um, it's really really sad really sad but 
honestly, I can I can't recommend seeing someone enough. And I, I don't care if you're not depressed. I don't care if you're not anxious. But just the underlying damage that stress and pressure, especially being a dad, one of the business, being in the uh, building industry, can have on you. So I feel amazing now. I feel energized again. I mean, I already feel good at the moment anyway, but I feel really energized. And it, and it makes me a better person to be around. So yeah, therapy. Honestly, I can't recommend it enough. It's made me a better boss, better colleague, a more effective leader, a more visionary person in business, a better husband, but most importantly, a better dad, because that's, that's the most important job that I've got. You don't need to suffer. I'm not embarrassed. It's made me more money. It really has. There's nothing more I can say about that. So don't hesitate. Get it done. Over at our new build project, finally, we're getting roof timbers on the rear extensions. You remember, we've got the main roof on, but we've had to drop the scaffold and the brickies have had to get it up to wall plate so we can get the rear roof rafters on. That is happening, although it's raining. My boys are made of uh, strong stuff and they're cracking on. So it's good to see that job coming together. The weather is up against us. I feel like I say that in every episode, but honestly, it does rain in Manchester a lot. But we crack on, because we're not made of sugar. Now, I'm downstairs in the workshop, and I'm absolutely buzzing to find out that there's another van in for repair. So the boys at LNR, Plumbing and Heating Limited, have seen us on uh, socials and on YouTube that we're now looking after vans and cars and servicing and repairs and they've uh, given us a call they called the office yesterday and said that they've had this van in for other works other repairs that's been done but it keeps cutting out so they've now brought it to us this morning eight o'clock and dale's going to jump straight on it and we're going to try and get it back to them and running by the end of the day so i'm here now with dale the main man and he's plugged our little computer in there and hopefully he's going to work out what's up with it dale what do we reckon um, so I plugged it in and it's coming up with, with, with all sorts of codes really. So um, from experience, I'm guessing there's some sort of water uh, getting about uh, around the ECU because the, the, the situated above the, the wheel arch. Um, so I'm going to try and clear these, uh, have a quick look under the engine bay um, and just see if I can notice anything out of the ordinary, if there's any trim missing or... Um, yeah, just just see what see what I can find really. So it's a couple of hours later now, and the magician that is Dale has sussed out the problem. What was it, Dale? Uh, so basically, yeah, part of the scuttle panel. Scuttle panel. Uh, there's the leak off parts on the, on each end, and the ECU is actually situated right down on the uh, wheel arch itself, right next to the wing. So where the exit is for the water is literally running straight onto all the plugs. Uh, which literally could just chuck out so many fault codes because it's just getting wet and it, which caused the van to stall on the, on the customer. So, so we took it out for a drive? Yeah, so we've taken it out for a good drive um, and there's no faults. Um, it's, not, it's not cutting out and it's, yeah. and it's sorted, sorted it. I'll be honest, all of that went right over my head, <laughs> but I'll take your word for it. But it really is like so good for me to think that like I'm actually making money now from doing something that I actually don't know that much about. But what I do know is about how to put the right people in place, the right tools and equipment and create the right environment and then put the word out and the work comes. So always the way and that gives me such a buzz. So um, we've just found out that the boys at LNR now want us to do a full service on this. So Dale's gonna crack on now and get under the bonnet and get it sorted. So 
so it's Tuesday afternoon and I know a lot of people will be in the same position as me. It's VAT return time. Our VAT return is due tomorrow. Now, probably a lot of you think I would have someone in place doing that. And we've got really good accountants that look after the end of year stuff, give us good sort of tax planning advice and things. But just little things like that, I've never been able to let go. And I do really struggle with letting go of certain things that just have to be right because I don't know why, because it's my neck on the line if it's not right. So, yeah, weirdly, I still do the VAT return, but I actually enjoy doing it. Because you actually, when you're doing a VAT return, a lot of you know if you use software, you have to go through every single purchase manually and you have to reconcile it. And it gives you a real sort of close look at what you're spending money on and it makes you review um, some of the transactions. Even though, again, we've got really good reporting, Alex does a lot of uh, looking at the company to see what we're spending and works out overhead, etc. But in terms of the VAT, I can see literally what leaves our bank account day in, day out. And it makes you question it and makes you think that question, do we need to be spending that? Um, but yeah, it is a problem. And it's a problem that I found because I started this business from just me on my own. And now I've got all these people that work for me and around me. You'd think that I'd be able to like really let go and delegate, but I can't because this will always be my baby, particularly the construction side. Now, the other stuff we do, property, I've started that with Alex, uh, the preferred joinery business, it was already going. So as much as I love those businesses because they're inside our group, I don't feel the same. I feel like I gave birth to every trade and it is my baby, it'll always be my baby, which is weird because I reckon if I'd worked this hard in other industries, other businesses, I'd probably be way richer. But yeah, back return. I've actually nearly done it. I've been I've been on top of it this quarter where normally I'll leave it till the end or whatever, but I've just been organised to stay on top of it. So not really a nasty shock in terms of how much it is because I was kind of expecting it. Sometimes you do it and you press the button, you're like, oh God, please make sure we've got enough money to cover it. But um, nah, it's what I expected. Um, so I'll get this filed. I've actually got till tomorrow, so if I wanted to, I could uh, chill for 24 hours. But no, going to um, get it, get it filed, get it paid, go home. But yeah, another rainy day in Manchester. And I always go on about the weather, but literally, feel like I want to make people aware of what we have to deal with in Manchester. Man, it rains every day, and uh, I really am looking forward to a bit of sunshine. So that's Tuesday. Back tomorrow. Good morning. It's Wednesday, another busy day at the office. Oh, yes, thank you, uh, T. Burn West. No worries. But why have you given me this 40 cup? Huh? I just put 10 years on your age. Man, it's not 40. 10 years on you, yeah? How old do you reckon I am? Put in the comments. Honestly, though, this game has aged me. You little whippersnapper. Um, who drinks tea? I honestly have about 800 cups of tea a day. Mm. Quite milky as well. Milk, very milky, no sugar. That's my, uh, that's my tipple. So, yeah, great day today. Not sure if you can hear, but it's all going off. What I'm really excited about, and a lot of things excite me, as you know, but the lads have managed to find us some ramps for downstairs, and we are going to collect them today. We've got no idea if we're going to be able to get them on the back of our trailer, but we're off, and we're going to get them and bring them back. I hope you're uh, not finding these car rants boring, but actually this is the time when I feel most comfortable, like just speaking to the camera with no one around. I'm on my own in the car and I can just be clear in my thoughts and I'm not trying to be funny. I just want to deliver value. So last week we talked a bit about cash flow and the effects that has on our business and every business. But I did say that cash flow problems usually point towards an underlying profit issue, i.e. a company not making enough profit. Now, I mentioned that a job can be profitable, all your jobs can be profitable, but your business might be unprofitable. And we've been in that situation. 
again, I don't mind being open about it because I think there's value to be had. We've been in that situation, whereas we've had jobs on paper and we've tracked it in the software and it's like, that's profitable, that's profitable. Why are we not making money? Why have we not got lots of money left in the bank at the end of the month or the end of the year or whatever? And when you drill down, you realize that the problem is actually your business itself, i.e. overheads, staffing cost, not cost of sales, but your back-end office, etc., etc. your sort of non-fee earning staff and overheads are costing too much. So for example, we spend, I think, about 13K a month on vehicles, be it finance, insurance, tax, not even including maintenance, that's separate cost. And we probably weren't aware that we were spending that much. Sounds ridiculous, but we weren't. Because you just, like I said the other week, business is sometimes just a washing machine of cash. You put money in and some comes out. Hopefully there's enough to come out on a Friday to pay your wages and pay yourself. Um, but we were, we were just literally unprofitable. And so what we've done, we drilled right down and we did a full spreadsheet. Alex, uh, I did a version, Alex did a version, and we really drilled down into all the costs that we were spending that were not labor, not materials. So that'd be staff, as in back-end staff, vans, rent, business rates, um, paper, stationery, insurances, all these things. And we actually worked it right down to what it cost us per week, per day. And there's like the most important bit, per hour. Um, it's a house that I own. <laughs> um, and per hour. So what we then did is worked out how many billable man hours we have in our business. Now, you think a man works three hours a day, it doesn't because he's got to move about, he's got to get food, he's got to have a, uh, there's the brew breaks, um, and obviously you lose it. So we based it on like a conservative six hour working day. So then what we did was we worked out a price per hour what we should be adding on to our labor rates and that then gave us our true price per hour and it's hard work and you've got that can change week to week month to month but what we also did we added that price per hour overhead charge to our highest paid tradesmen so you've always got that wriggle room insulation in your business that if you have got one of your laborers doing something that you've got one of your really highly skilled tradesmen doing, you're actually making more money and that gives you that insulation. But then that's not profit. That's just cost delivery, price per hour. Then you add on your profit margin. Now, people don't talk about profit a lot because it's a commercially sensitive topic. However, I think that we should. And I am gonna talk about it now. Profit margin is different for different companies, yeah? Everyone gets to choose what their profit margin is. Now remember, I'm not talking about a cost per hour here, because you've already worked that out. I'm talking about turning. You've, I'm talking purely about profit. That is the bit that's left in the bank after everything's been paid, yeah? And that's the bit that you pay tax on, profit, yeah? So, in an ideal world, we want to make 20, 25% margin, yep. Depending on the size of the job. Now, if it's a really big job for a really loyal returning customer uh, and it's quite straightforward, we might lower that to 15%. If it's a small job or it's a tricky job or it's like one of the higher end sort of surface repair jobs or, or heating works, then that might be pushed up to 30%. But typically in the industry, I think that and I've worked across a full range of projects, 15 to 30, 35, 40%. It's what's got to be right for your business, yeah, and what's right for you. Now, again, that does not include the overhead and the cost of sales, i.e. the tradesman's labour. So, how many of you guys actually know what your overhead is per hour? Allowing in for contingency, wastage, be honest and open and realistic about what it actually costs to run your business. Because it doesn't always go well in business, I've told you that. Things go wrong all the time. Plans get broken into, as we know. Grabs break down, as we know. 
Things happen all the time. And also, don't base it on best case scenario. Be realistic and be honest because you're only cheating yourself. So yeah, how many people, tell me in the comments, because honestly, I find it so interesting. I know what people do. How many people know what it costs per hour to run their business? And how many people use that figure and then add genuine gross margin profit the actual cream that's left at the end of the job that's the stuff that i'll pay for your nice cars your nice holidays your expansion your growth it'll also protect you if the wheels fall off literally profit beautiful word man. beautiful word so wednesday's coming to an end First time I managed to get to my desk properly today and having a catch up, I've got so much to do. I just feel like I'm always behind with the things I've got to do. My inbox can't keep on top of it, which is fine. But I, So I'm having to be a bit selective about the emails I'm replying to, but um, yeah, I'll get through it. I'll just power through it. So I can get on it tonight and I'll just have an hour where I just power through and get through everything. Um, over in Liverpool, I don't really talk much about what we've got going on in Liverpool, but we've got a whole different operation there. Obviously we've got, the property development stuff that we do with Emperor, our property brand, we've got about five or six ongoing developments at the moment on site there. And they're really good projects and they're really interesting and we need to try and get down there more so we can show you what we're doing. Especially if you're interested in property development and property investment, there's loads to see. So what I think I'm gonna do is a full day in Liverpool with Alex, just showing you our whole setup there. Uh, we've also got preferred joinery, our joinery business that we're finally managing to put some time into it. Alex does two days a week there, because obviously he's based over there. And they're turning out such nice jobs all the time. But what we're trying to do at the moment is put a bit of TLC into the factory. So we've give it a bit of liquor paint, painted the floor, put some new LED lights, because the lights are really dark, dingy, old, the bulbs out and all sorts. So we've put a bit of, uh, bit of TLC into that. But honestly, it's a whole different side of our business. Um, one that I want to get more involved in, but because I'm so busy over here with our stuff that I don't get over to Liverpool enough. I, I used to try and get over once a week in touch base with Alex, but I've just not had the chance. So Alex tends to come over here a lot more now, but it's, it's amazing to know that we're in two cities, even though we've got work up and down the country at the moment. We're in Durham now, um, we're working in uh, London, and we've, like I said, we've been in Wales recently, but our main two cities, full blast, are Liverpool and Manchester, and it's, it's amazing. Yeah, but that's uh, Wednesday, still a bit to do, but I'm just gonna crack on and get my head down now. Good morning, it's Thursday. It's raining, I'm like the weatherman in Manchester, but it is raining again. We've had to stand down, all the sites because actually a bit of snow in the mix and it's raining that much that it's actually raining inside our unit which is uh, great in it especially given what we do for a living but you don't make money working on your own unit do you so the bin will have to do for now so i've just come into the meeting room for a little bit of quiet time because it's manic out there there's loads of people in everyone's in to be honest it's great i love it it's a hive of activity but i can't work with all the distractions because i just can't stop listening to what's going on i almost answer every call next to the person it's, it's tough so i'm doing a little bit of a planning session i've just met with one of our project managers charlotte who we are going to get on camera at some point i'm grinding her down um, and we've planned out our one of our next builds from start to finish. Now, as I showed you in a previous episode, I like to gant them all out using our software, but I also initially like to um, put them out manually. So I've got a sheet that I've created here and I do it really manually there down the side upon the whole phasing of the job out, literally from site setup to snagging from the start, every trade, how many weeks. And I like to do it that way because it, I can visually see it in my mind. I cross reference that with the drawings. This is a job that we've actually designed, so it's nice. We're gonna literally see it through from end to end. Um, and I just think this way, you can tangibly in your mind, work out how long you think things are gonna take. Um, you can make notes. I've marked down every building inspector visit and uh, literally right through to the job. So allowing a week's contingency, this job will take 14 weeks, but I actually reckon we'll do it in about 12. But um, again, it's better to, um, under promise and over deliver. But again, with the weather or if it needs piling or something like that, you could easily lose a couple of weeks. But I don't know how you guys do it. And I do believe that Gantt charting is the best way, but I love a bit of old school planning. 
I've been doing this for a couple of years, honestly. It's revolutionized, revolutionized the way we work. So I recommend it. I might actually bang some of these templates to the documents I use in the descriptions or drop a drop a comment in the uh, drop a comment in the comments and I'll maybe send them to you. Because if it works for us, then I don't see why it wouldn't work for someone else. But yeah, I've got a busy day. It's absolutely shucking it down. I'm not going out on site because my hair frizzes up a lot in this rain. So I'm gonna take a few meetings in here and try and be as productive as I can at HQ. What a beautiful day for building. Welcome to Manchester, baby. So we've had to move a bit of the activity inside. I've done a deal with Dave from D&J Projects. He had a brainwave. He's gonna loan our crusher and then send back concrete box for our bays. It was a great idea, but the problem is he's transporting the crusher down to Nottingham. It's too heavy to tow on any of our trailers, so we're gonna try and get it onto the baby grab. We've got a forklift that'll lift it onto there, but we're gonna create some stillage so it can um, be lifted onto the bed, strap it down and send it down. Then he's got a way of getting it off at the other side. So the dig and Dale and Tom have moved into our workshop to try and make this stillage now. We've also fitted our two post ramp. We're moving. not grip sand up a pound a ton because I think if we get over 40 tons at a time we get a dis discount on that um, the MOT I'm happy with and I'll double check the price on the sand but I think that's right so I think we've done it so I'm in the meeting room and I'm having a meeting with the dig we're uh, pricing what we're going to be charging out the aggregates for the yard because we're literally at the point now where we're going to take delivery hopefully you're going to have a delivery of some product tomorrow and get it straight out it's a difficult conversation this because the dig doesn't talk back so i'm not getting very far but still we've made some progress we've priced some stuff up and um yeah we're going to start selling big time this is like the culmination of probably about six months planning finding the yard spending loads of money to set it up finding the right person to help me set it up and run it. Um, again, that was a challenging interview because the dig didn't talk, but I just knew he was the right man for the job. But right, I'm gonna save it. Are you happy with this price now, this price list now, dig? Yeah? Uh, constructive so that's it for Thursday another good day happy because look we've got our ramps installed if you'd asked me a few months ago whether we'd have um, ramps that lift vehicles up and this would be a workshop down here I wouldn't have believed you because I had no real intentions or no real vision of having this service but I know that we're on the right path and we're onto something here so yeah boys have got them in apparently these bad boys lift four tons Luckily, we've got a free phase supply in the unit, but we don't use it, but we're gonna wire that one in now because these are three phase, that's all taking place now. And I'm pleased to say we've also got uh, another vehicle in, ready for repair. Not sure what's up with this, I'll find out off Dale, but it's amazing. We've set it up in two weeks, got the ramps in, and we've got literally, I think this is our fourth job this week. And don't forget, Dale's here looking after our own stuff. Um, so yeah, it's amazing. So yeah. Thursday, done and dusted. It's Friday, I'm in the yard, and we've got aggregates. Honestly, today, we had 40 ton of our own type one MOT delivered into the yard. It's not much, and it is just a pile of stone, but for me, and for us, it's the culmination of six months of hard work planning it's so hard to find a site, find staff to run the site, buy the machines and the equipment to go on the site. 
and then find someone that supplies the aggregate at a price where you can actually make a bit of money on it. Honestly, it's, uh, it's brilliant. And beside it, we're building up a nice stockpile of our own recycled, crushed, hardcore, 6 or 5, whatever you want to call it. We're playing about with that, getting different consistencies and things like that. We might have some bigger stuff, some smaller stuff, but honestly, I can't tell you how happy I am. I mean, I've achieved quite a few things in my career and I've won big jobs and close to winning the biggest job we've ever done. But honestly, this gives me such a kick because it's just when you wake up and it's an, ad an idea that you have and then finally it's done and I'm, uh, I'm over the moon. But yeah, it's still raining and it's still very muddy, but we move and we're now in the aggregates game. This yard is really starting to take shape now. I mean, it depends what your class is taking shape. At the moment, we've got piles of all different types of muck, but this was just one big pile not so long ago. And the boys have managed to separate the piles. We've also done a deal with a local civils company and we're taking all their hardcore uh, tarmac. We're gonna recycle that and get that back out. And we're actually gonna resupply them. It's like the perfect situation. They're giving us their rubble that they were transporting and paying the transport to get rid of but we're actually then processing it, crushing it, and sending it back to them. So it's win-win for everyone. And also it's less vehicles on the road, less diesel being burnt. So saving the environment, God, love it. But yeah, it's, um, again, it doesn't look like much, but these piles, I see money and I see progress. Um, it's, uh, it's exciting. I can't wait till the weather dries up as well. And we can actually start screening some soil on our little screener and there's going to be a bit of an update on that because we've uh, ordered a new machine that's going to make that whole process even more efficient so yeah i mean depends what you're into but big piles of rubble and muck are my thing at the moment I, I, honestly when i was uh leaving school i never thought i'd say that love it who wants to brew so I'm in the, the lad's little crew area now that we've uh, sorted out. I mean, it's not much, but I'll tell you what, it's warm and it's dry. And I've noticed that we've actually used some of the materials out of um, the stores. So it's amazing. This is just a, this was an old container that I bought. It was ruined. Obviously, it doesn't look that much at the moment, but the lads have now got somewhere where they can make a bit of food, boil a kettle, keep warm. So um, yeah, I'm loving it. And uh, if this was your worktop, in your house, I'm sure you're glad it's gone to a good home, because it has, it's come to our home. But yeah, it's great, I love it, it's just more progress. What we're gonna do is put a little bit of an office at the front there, so if we do get people coming for aggregates, we're gonna be able to serve them there. I'm not really envisioning it, it to be very customer facing, and what I'll do a lot of it online through social media, I'm gonna try and make that process really slick where they can pay by Apple Pay, uh, book whatever they need, give them a really good, efficient service, try and be, what builders need us to be and landscapers and civils, whatever, whoever we supply. I want them to literally have no friction, literally go on the phone and go, oh, I want to grab, bang, paid for, done. I want some materials, bang, paid for, done. So I'm building that back end at the moment, but with uh, getting some basic things in place. Um, this is my flask here and um, my missus always gives me a load of grief for it because it's absolutely bad. She says, you own 26 houses, um, uh, you know, you've got five million pound turnover companies, but you'll have, you've got the most budget flask. But I absolutely love this flask. I'm a bit weird like that. It's like I always wear joggers. And rather than buy new pairs of joggers, I just dye the same ones because I like the fit and it feels nice. But I actually have got about 10 pairs of the same ones. And every time they need to be washed, they fade. So we just dye them. But again, we're moving and things like this make me happy. So it was going well. And I was really happy and really excited. And then I walked to have a little look at my beautiful crusher and noticed this in the side here. This is the downside of owning plant, I guess. My beautiful crusher, which cost the price of a small house, has got a big dent in the side. So I'm gonna find out who did that. I mean, the dig's gonna have words. It doesn't look damaged though, to be fair, but. So this morning I got a call from the boys at Danes Low. I don't know if you guys follow their channel, but honestly, it's great. Again, that's another channel that got me into 
doing what we're doing now because they're similar to us. They've got a landscaping business. They've um, got pl a bit of plant hire going. They've got more kit than us and their yard that they're putting together now. They're setting up a yag aggregate yard. It's well better than ours. But um, really nice lads and um, at a similar stage, it was on their YouTube journey. So yeah, they gave me a call out the blue this morning, the top lads, and we talked about maybe uh, getting together with them to um, do some content. And I, I had an idea about getting us, them, Dave from D&J and Stevie from D&J, maybe Baz, um, maybe uh, the professional struggler, Chris. He subscribed to my channel this week, absolutely buzzing. Nearly wrote the car off when I saw that, absolutely buzzing. So good to have you on board, Chris. I cannot wait to meet you because we've got a lot of things for you to do. And I've got Dale, but I know you're a, you're a veteran, you're a master of your, of your game, so it'd be great to get you in the yard. So let me know when you're up to Manchester because uh, I'll get a job list together for you. But yeah, it's good, that's what it's all about. YouTube's a community. And um, yeah, if you're, uh, if you're looking for more content, obviously stick with us, but give the boys at Dane's Low a follow. Uh, I'll drop a, a link below. We need to sort a couple, I need to actually discuss a couple of the last ones with you. Okay, that'll be fine. So, my worst part of the week. I get to spend more time with KTM, which is good, but it's the time that everyone understands how painful it is. I've got to pay people. We're just looking, um, at the numbers here now and what's it looking like KTM? It's pretty standard on the um Let's see sub, the number. Subby. Do you want yeah, to actually Yeah. Yeah, so it's a pretty big number. Yeah, it's yeah. funny really because obviously <clears throat> KTM and I and I have done the pay run for 13, 14 years now. Mm -hmm. And um I remember when he used to be like fifteen hundred quid a week and uh, that probably included our wages, didn't it? Yeah. Well, not probably so, not five a day for you, but um and how, how mad is it now? Because it is a lot bigger every week. The amount of money we send out every week, it's, it's mad as now. It's relative it's, though, isn't it? It is but, relative. Ob but obviously, like, yeah, some, sometimes it's, it can be double the amount that you expect it to be if you've got a bigger project going on and yeah. you've paid more subbies in other cities and stuff. But yeah. this is pretty standard, this, isn't, this week. I know, but it still blows my mind that we've got to find at least that amount of money every yeah. week. But we always do manage it. Today, again, though, was a prime example. We had a big... Uh, invoice that was due for payment that we we were told it would get paid and it did get paid but there was a period there where we weren't a hundred percent sure if it had mm -hmm. land or not so it's such a relief we've got an emoji we send back and forth to each other which is basically a picture of an eagle because it means the eagles landed so yeah. yep everyone paid signed I'll sign it off now and uh, that's that you'll remember a few more episodes ago we uh, are doing a pretty nice job. KTM actually took you around on a terrace, a full renovation, inside and out. Well, finally, the weather is hopefully going to be better next week. So our boys are in there hacking off the render and it's not an easy job. with the man, the myth, the legend that is Danny, he who shall not ever appear on camera because he's too good looking. We're just looking at what estimates we're sending out this week and what we've sent out. And uh, we've sent a lot out, we're pricing a lot of work at the moment. And uh, if all that comes in, then we've got a problem. If none of that comes in, then we've got a problem. So hopefully some of it will come in. You remember early in this episode, I was telling you about a deal that Dave from D&J Projects and I have done where we're going to send down our crusher and in return he's going to send back some of those beautiful concrete blocks for us but to transport the crusher we had to create some stillage well the dig and Dale have worked their magic I'm a Bobby girl in the Bobby world. So that's it, another week at Every Trade done and dusted. Busy week this week, feel like I haven't achieved enough and you get those weeks in business where you just 
feel like you haven't ticked off enough off your list but we've made some good progress i'm really pleased about the yards coming on i'm really pleased with how the new build project is finally getting to a point now where we can get it fully watertight and we can get out of there to be honest but another week down i hope you're liking these episodes guys the comments and the feedback's been amazing it's uh, honestly replying to the comments is one of my favorite things to do and the subscribers flying up is uh, is amazing if you like what we're doing please don't for please don't forget to subscribe because it's so important it's weird it's like literally i think we've got like 10 percent of our viewers are subscribed and it helps because the more good feedback we get the more i'm going to put out there the more honest i'm going to be my ambition eventually is to try and do two videos a week but we'll get there but yeah another week at every trade done click here to watch last week's episode and click here and here to watch some episodes you might not have seen before and click here to subscribe. See you next week.